So today, I read Tribes by Seth Godin. I'm sorry that I don't have gold rimmed glasses, or else I'd be wearing those to look more like the author and speaker in the audiobook, oh, which is the version I read. This. Seth Godin is a marketing guru, and Tribes is a collection of his blog posts all on the subject of leadership or creating your own tribe. For Seth Godin, a tribe is a group of people unified by a belief. A person can have a belief in moral issues, can have a belief in a process needing to change, the direction of a company needing to change, or taste and opinion on things. It doesn't matter what the belief is about. What matters is that there is a clear belief present and a group willing to cater to that belief. It doesn't need to be logical. Taking from outside the book, I think Seth Godin would agree with Peter Thiel in his book Zero to One, where Peter Thiel says the important thing about determining where you stand and how to become a leader and how to take initiative is ask yourself the following question. What important truth do you believe in that very few people seem to believe in? Take that, see what other people agree with it, commit to that as something that you believe in, and see how far it goes. That seems to be the secret of forming a tribe, as Seth states it. For him, the change that comes in an organization, the fulfilling part of the organization, comes from finding that something is wrong in the organization or making the observation and then making the dedication to fix that. A lot of the times, according to him, the way a organization is structured benefits stability and a lack of risk, which usually benefits the people at top because they're the ones who put the organization together in the first place under an idea of what is reasonable based on their own beliefs. He uses, in fact, the word heretic, that he thinks most leaders need to be heretics, believing that there is some good an organization needs to do and that the organization is designed to just kind of keep doing what it's doing in almost all instances, and that new things are often persecuted, even if it's obvious that that's what's going to happen or that's what needs to happen, and that there is a need for this constant change. To be a leader means that you fully commit to a new idea as it goes forth, not because you have the rational or reasoning behind it, because like all the old structures clearly have people who are taking all the information and optimizing it to be maximized. In fact, that's how he defines manager as separate from a leader. For him, a manager is someone who takes the information that already exists or the resources that already exist and maximizes their efficiency, whereas a leader notices that there is some new direction that needs to be had. Um, he uses a lot of good examples in his book, but the one that I can think of is um, he talks about animal shelters how there is now a no-kill animal shelter in place, whereas before there were uh, killing animals was a pretty much necessity, according to the dogma of the charities or the animal adoption centers at the place, because they didn't think that there was a way to keep up with all of them. Um, and now there's a movement going on that goes into establishing no-kill shelters or a method to have the animal live out their natural life, spaying and neutering them in order to make sure that they don't breed so much that they can't control it, um, but just making sure that the lives that they're already there are lived to the best uh, that their resources can adequately provide. And this seems just like a normal like gut reaction thing, and, and it's something that everyone has identified as something that people want because ideally they care about animals because they're working at the animal shelters. This had a huge influence on people when it was first proposed in the animal shelter, who would argue things like, if people didn't think that their animals would be killed, then there would be a greater percent chance that they would throw them on the street. And there were weird rationales like that that were keeping it from changing. And that usually happens. Something, a strange rationale comes into place to keep the existing power structures in check. But if you have an idea on how to change things um, that is actually just based on your belief, then that's the first place to start. It will always be stupid. There will always be things to optimize. You just need to make sure that the overall goal going forward is the case. You just have to make sure that the overall idea fits common sense, fits rationale, fits the direction that you want to go. Um, and it's possible that some of the old ways will be better than the new ways because, you know, again, you don't have all that optimization that's in place, so it's possible you come up with a new idea and then you finish it and, 
worse than the old idea, and you just kind of have to accept that that failure is a part of it. Usually people will go towards the novel and the new. If anything, that's part of the thesis of one of his other books, uh, Purple Cow. He thinks that people are more interested in novelty, timing, and figuring out new ideas than there are in craftsmanship or mastery of ideas. And quality for him seems to be dictated often by the organization, but ideally is dictated by the people who are buying the damn thing, which usually have kind of a not well fleshed out version of what they want. And you kind of just need to go off of what your best guess is. Again, kind of going off of an intuit intuitive approach. Part of Seth Godin's multiple diatribes on leadership are focused on the development of a movement. For him, the development of a movement is taking initiative in telling a narrative about how things are and how things should be and where they're going to go to forming connections with yourself and other members who believe the same narrative and three having a call to action and removing as many barriers to performing that call to action as possible obviously if you have something that requires like 10 million dollars in order to have like a buy-in in order to start not a lot of people are going to do that but if your tribe is entirely billionaires then that might actually be a tribe that's reasonable you need to determine this based on your situation for him being a heretic and being situational is all about what being a tribe is and being a tribe doesn't necessarily mean being in a company it doesn't necessarily mean being social it means being just a group of people who believe something seth gadin spends some time talking about what it means to form a tribe and why it's important to form a tribe let's say you're an artist and you want to try and justify your living situation so you form a patreon how many people on patreon donating five dollars a month would it take to justify your living situation a thousand true fans is what he gives as an example because five thousand dollars a month is more than enough for most people to live on so all you need to do is convince one thousand people that what you're doing is worth a damn and then you have a pretty good living situation. There are obvious criticisms to the logic that this book presents. The first of which, saying that you should commit to a belief and then just keep going with it, seems to cause stubbornness and big-headedness, which is often what leaders are accused of having. Having this faith and committing to it without a check or a balance seems just stupid to me. So figure out what you would need to have in order to be... Um, to prove you wrong, when should you change the belief, or when should you modify it, seems like the right thing to do. In addition to that, building up followers and being a part of multiple tribes seems like it might be very difficult to manage. Um, having 1,000 followers, it kind of sets it up like a pyramid scheme unless you assume that people belong or lead in multiple tribes. So you need to have an interesting system in place in order to make this work. And none of his blogs really go into the details of how that works, or if he thinks that this is how businesses should run, how it should be effectively implemented. But this, once again, goes into, it seems like he's on the right track, and I feel like there's a rationale that can be provided that easily clear these up. I just haven't been able to think of them myself. Uh, he uses the word heretic a lot. He brings up religion a lot. Uh, specifically, he likes going against religion because for, for him, religion is kind of against faith in that religion establishes rules to follow, whereas faith is the intuitive part of the religion. For me, that kind of the wording in the book was actually the, the thing that most took me out of it because it really feels like he hates the rules that are in place and prefers the common sense as opposed to the building up of them. And for me, I, I can think of many instances where the two work together hand in hand. But that criticism aside, this call for leadership, this call for initiative, this call for building movements within, even if it's just like 10 dudes who all think that the coding needs to be improved in organization, and so they manage to build up um, a story around that, they manage to build up a set of reasoning, they manage to build up something that gets people's attention, whether that's a publicity stunt or something else. Getting that attention and getting people to care is the most important part of the marketing and according to being a leader. Um, I saw a class led by Stanford online called Blitzscaling, where the, I believe, then CEO of YouTube went and said that there are four levels of employees, according to them. There were those at the top who made people want to believe in something, or who set the direction and who set the narrative. There were the strategists directly below them who thought about the most efficient way to take that plan of action and make it into something that's widespreading and thought about ways to make it into movements. 
Um, there were the people below them who came with action plans that in each individual area, there are specific instances to talk to people of different values or of different interpretations or just in different areas. Like if you have Minneapolis in one area and New York in another, you're going to need different action plans. Those are the people who put those into effect. And finally at the bottom are the people who Seth Godin calls uh, the sheep people. And yes, he does have like a wake up sheep, sheeple moments, which are the people who just follow instructions who don't try and get better who just kind of take the plans that are made by the others and are kind of the robots of the world um he refers to them as such he is really frustrated with them um that's actually a, another big complaint i don't see much of a mention of craftsmanship although he does mention being good and being of a quality but for him quality kind of fit the organization but if you interpret it as doing what people want and finding a belief that people want and finding out who you actually want to appeal to, that seems more reasonable. Um, for him, the difference between a, cr a tribe and a group of people who seem to all share a common belief is that a tribe, people who are members of a tribe acknowledge themselves as a member of a tribe. Someone who watches cat videos could be a member of a crowd of people who just happen to like cat videos, or they could be a member of a tribe of people who have decided to watch cat videos whenever they see a new and interesting one come up in order to judge them and critique them. And that's the difference, is there is a mental switch in your head saying, oh, this is a thing, this is a part of who I am, this is an identity of mine, I have decided that I like this enough to keep going. Um, and that's what it takes to become a follower, and being the first follower basically makes you a leader, or the one who says, look, this is what is clearly happening, how does it work? Uh, this usually means that there needs to be something that seems very reasonable and is pointed out that there's actually somewhat old. Usually movements build up drip by drip, not necessarily by, this seems reasonable, I'm the first one to come up with it, time to do it now. It has to be something kind of like seeping under that everyone's kind of doing for a while and you just happen to be a part of. But luckily that is true for everyone's life, uh, as the motto of the book seems to be. Everyone should take initiative, everyone should try and be a leader. The way that we can communicate with one another is fundamental to it. Again, part two of forming a movement is creating as many bonds to other people as possible, um, establishing tighter connections between people, establishing tighter bonds within one another, uh, utilizing as many communication places as possible and building up over time. All seem to be fundamental to the idea of being a leader. Aside from that, Seth Godin just gives a ton of good examples to it, uh, inspirational words in becoming a maverick, becoming a heretic, becoming a leader of your own thoughts because of what's rational and good to you, not necessarily what is following the rules. And if that sounds interesting to you, then I recommend Seth Godin's book on tribes. And that's it. Um, I've decided in order to encourage people to be more tribal with their activities after this book, I will link down in the description um, as many resources as I can find after recording this that can link you to any groups that are using these. For example, I'm going to link Seth Godin's blog on, on uh, marketing down below. I'll probably also link Neil Patel, who is a famous di digital marketer who is not related to the same tribe, but I bet most people who are interested in Seth Godin are interested in Neil Patel. Um, and I'll try and find other groups where you can participate in the discussion. I hope that you all like this. Please let me know if you want anything more like this. Um, I can't wait to see you all tomorrow. Bye. Sometimes all the world needs is a good man with a little bit of faith and a little bit of plan. Need a good man, good man, good man, go.